Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Monday, January 25th edition of the Basement Academy. As we gather again uh, after Sunday worship, we want to continue to follow our Lord each day. And so these uh, daily studies and reflections are intended to give some continuing thought and reflection to extend uh, our gathered worship uh, into uh, some personal and, and private study and reflection so that it might translate into our lives uh, for Christ. So uh, thanks for joining uh, for another week. I think this will be the last week of our studying the rule of prayer. Um, so this will be the fourth week and very intentionally trying to slow roll this study so that you can help to develop a new practice. The practice being praying the Psalms daily. Five Psalms a day, one chapter of the Proverbs, and you'll go through the entire book of Psalms and the entire book of Proverbs. So at the end of this week, we'll almost have been through um, an entire month together. Again, assuming you're reading on Saturday uh, and Sunday. And so it takes a while to establish a new pattern or a new practice or new habit. Um, as I suggested, trying to be really honest, full disclosure, it takes a while. There's some struggle at first because it's, it's just a foreign practice, a foreign idea, foreign thing to do to just take, you know, five a day, you know, taking the time as well as focusing on someone else's words and trying to make them our own uh, prayers. Um, so anyway, let me dive in with a morning psalm, uh, Psalm 85. Yes, one of my favorites. I like this one. This is for the director of music of the Sons of Korah. It is a psalm. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. That's Psalm 85. God is faithful to his people, calling them to himself, making promises, delivering them out of Egyptian slavery, leading them through the wilderness to the promised land, leading them into the land, establishing the kingdom. But over time, over the centuries, Israel drifts and they experience uh, oppression. Uh, and opposition. And so this is written in the context of remembering you showed favor and yet will you um, will you not revive us again? Show us your unfailing love. Will you be angry forever? So during the time of um, enemy opposition, Assyrian and Babylonian oppression, um, the exile comes and so it's 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 a it's a difficult time. But the psalm ends, hopefully, I love this phrase, love and faithfulness meet together, righteousness and peace kiss each other. These character qualities of God that he, uh, through his Holy Spirit, imparts or brings into the lives of his people, um, it's, a, it's a calling out, believing God at the heart, even after a time of, of discipline, God will show favor uh, and mercy. So anyway, Psalm 85, uh, it's a good one to know. Hopefully you'll read that uh, this day and, and be encouraged. 
Okay, last week we were looking at the darker side of the Psalms, uh, the angry Psalms and the sad Psalms, and talking about ways that we can make those prayers our prayers, okay? And how they help to connect us to the East of Eden lives we actually live, the reality of sadness and anger and frustration, and as we uh, teased out at the end of the week, even our hatred. And they keep us grounded in the way life is. And so they're important psalms for us to learn. Okay, what I want to talk about uh, this week, a little more positive, I, I, I promise that, and I hope this will be a, a more positive or, or you know, hopeful and encouraging set of reflections. Um, and, and it springs off some questions that I've received some years ago when I began to teach this uh, concept or this course of on praying the Psalms. I had somebody simply raise their hand after maybe the third or fourth uh, lesson and said, I thought Christians were supposed to pray in the name of Jesus and then asked a real question, where do we find Jesus in the Psalms? And, and it was an honest question, but it definitely was coming from a place of a person who had been trained in prayer. Christians are um, directed, instructed by Jesus. To this point, you have not prayed in my name now. Pray in my name, and whatever you ask in my name, the Father will grant. So it's a fair question, even if there was maybe a little bit of pushback in it saying, kind of a yeah, 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 all this psalm stuff is great. But we pray in the name of Jesus, and I don't see Jesus' name uh, in the psalms. And so um, that, that question challenged me, and it, and it pushed me to develop these set of reflections that I'll be sharing this week. And, and I found it for myself to be somewhat of an eye-opening experience, okay? And, and hopefully that will uh, be the case uh, for you as well. But we begin with the Emmaus Road encounter, okay? So if you can recall all the way back to Easter and then the, the weeks after Easter when we were shut down, live streaming only from the chapel, and Eric and I led on Sunday mornings a set of studies, a, a series of, of messages based on the Emmaus Road. So the two followers of Jesus who are crushed they see him crucified. They're not yet aware of his resurrection. So on that Easter Sunday, that first Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, they're walking down the road from Jerusalem back to Emmaus. It's, it's a day's journey. And a traveler comes up to walk amongst them, but they don't recognize who it is. They don't know this individual. Okay, we know it's Jesus. We, we, we the reader, come to understand this. And so we watch this experience of recognition unfolding. But here's the key. <clears throat> so this is Luke chapter 24. Uh, in verse uh, 25, I'll, I'll back up a verse. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Verse 27, And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures, that would include the Psalms, in all the scriptures concerning himself. Okay, so Jesus does Bible study with Cleopas and his friend as they're walking down the road. Imagine that. What a Bible study. They did not yet understand that the Christ had to rise from the dead, that Messiah had to rise. They were thinking military Christ, strong sword bearer, as it were. They didn't understand. They didn't have a category yet for Messiah who dies and then rises. And so they do Bible study with Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Their eyes are opened and the breaking of the bread, then Jesus disappears and they run to find the disciples in Jerusalem. They, I'm, I'm sorry, they run back to Jerusalem, they find the disciples, and they tell them everything that's happened on this road to Emmaus. Okay? Jesus then appears within the, the, the room there with the disciples. 
And he said to them, so now he's speaking to the the community of disciples. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. The Psalms aren't explicitly named in verse 27 when Jesus is speaking to Cleopas and his friend, but here when Jesus is speaking to the gathered disciples, he does mention the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And so the disciples did not yet understand, and many of us who are trying to pray the Psalms, many Christians do not fully understand how the Psalms are a primary witness to Jesus Christ. They're not a secondary or tertiary witness. Jesus, before the Gospels are written, uh, before the Apostle Paul is converted and um, writes his letters, before the book of Acts and all uh, of the uh, exciting proclamation and expansion of the church, before any of that, on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus, hours raised from the dead. He's just he's just been raised from the dead, right? So he's not even twenty four hours old in this in this risen, glorified um, body. He's doing Bible study with his first followers, his closest followers. He's doing Bible study from the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms, as how the Christ must suffer, who the Christ is, all of these realities. And so we're going to unpack that this week, okay? And so over time, what I have learned to do, again, how thankful I am for that first class of teaching this back, uh, I was trying to think about this. I got here in 01, so this would have been probably 1997-ish. Okay, so 24, 25 years ago in Boulder, Colorado, teaching a Sunday school class. And in the Q&A, the question comes up. I hadn't yet prepared for that, and it pushed me. And then as I did my study, it's like, oh my goodness, of course. And so I have learned, going back some 24, 25 years, that in my reading of the Psalms to read or to pray with what a $5 word, a theological word, Christocentric eyes, Christ-centered eyes, to read the Psalms as witness to Jesus. It's not every verse of every Psalm. It's not every Psalm. But the Psalter contains Count well, I'll say countless references because we can count them, but I am still learning uh, references. So, um, Psalm 85 that we read earlier righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. That language of preparing the way of the Lord now that's uh, Isaiah chapter 40, and it's also Malachi, and it gets fulfilled in the ministry of John the Baptist. But who is then preparing the way for whose steps? Righteousness goes before him. I now come to believe righteousness, that is John the Baptist preaching a a repentance, a, a baptism of repentance unto righteousness. Righteousness goes before him, that is Messiah, and prepares the way for his, that is Messiah's, steps. I can't prove that to you, but I believe it to be true. I believe Psalm 85 there to be a witness to Jesus Christ. At least when in my prayers of that psalm, it causes me to draw John the Baptist to mind, and yet how Righteousness precedes the work of God. Righteousness precedes his movement and his coming in our lives. So I see that as a call to righteousness in my own life. Okay, So that's how I personally pray that psalm. But praying or reading the psalms with Christocentric eyes, that's what this week is going to be about. Trying to help you see 
Some of them will be very easy and obvious, okay? Uh, Psalm 37, verse 11, the meek will inherit the land. So that's what the Psalm says. The meek will inherit the land or the earth. Jesus just picks up on that in the Beatitudes, right? The meek will inherit the earth. So Jesus is doing a direct quotation of Psalm 37 there. So that's an easy one. We can kind of cherry pick that one. Or as Jesus is riding into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Psalm 118. Again, an easy one that we can make the connection uh, quite simply. But there are others, and we go, oh. So that's what I'm hoping to do uh, this week. And so we need to recall going back to our theology series, particularly the Theology 100 series, there's a foreshadowing fulfillment motif that we find in our scriptures. And so the Old Covenant foreshadows what is fulfilled in the New Covenant. And so it also happens in the Psalms. The Psalms are foreshadowing, they're looking forward, they're anticipating um, one who comes and righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Um, what I would say, looks like I've lost a letter here. <clears throat> Jesus, so um, where is Jesus in the Psalms? Well, I want to talk about where Jesus is in the Psalms, okay? So reading uh, various Psalm texts, we'll do that over the next couple days. Where Jesus shows up in the Psalms, but then reading the Gospels, where do, do, does the Psalms show up in Jesus, okay? So there's really two sides to this one. Going back to the Psalms and seeing references there that are fulfilled in Jesus and then going to the Psalms and, I'm sorry, going to Jesus and the Gospels and seeing the same thing. So it's kind of two sides of the, of the same coin, okay? Um, and then, so we'll, we'll do that over the next couple days. Um, and it's, a, it's an exciting, encouraging, somewhat eye-opening experience, and it's made me hungrier to pray the Psalms when I realize, oh my goodness, they're not just all about stuff that happened way back there. They're about things that were fulfilled in Jesus. Okay, so again, not just Old Covenant, but really they do bring us into direct uh, connection with uh, the new covenant in Jesus, okay? Let's stop there. Let's take a moment to pray, and we'll pick up uh, on Tuesday uh, where we find uh, Jesus in the Psalms. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of a new day, of our lives, of the mercies which are fresh and new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for these Psalms. Thank you for these scriptures. Thank you for the Gospels and the way we come to recognize Jesus in the Psalms and the Psalms in the Gospels and in the life of our Lord Jesus. Deepen us as we engage the study uh, this coming week. And again, draw us close as we seek to learn this new rule of prayer. And so open our eyes, O oh Lord, as you opened the eyes of Cleopas and his friend, as you open the eyes of your disciples, that first Resurrection Sunday, as you explained from the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms, all the things concerning you that must be fulfilled. And so, Lord, we make ourselves available. We seek to be your faithful apprentices as we follow you into a new week of faith, hope, and love in your holy name. Hear us as we pray now, how you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, the psalmists, the prophets. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who sends forth the Spirit in Jesus' name, may that God watch over you and keep you and bless you this day and forevermore. Amen.